the graphics at the start, just the one change for Valencian from the team which gave themselves a lifeline with a draw at Marseille last week and in doing so ended Marseille's slim title hopes. That change comes in defence where the Serbian Milan Bisovac takes his place in the heart of the back four in place of Nicolas Isamat Mirin. For Nice, two changes to the team which beats Lorient last Saturday. And took a big step towards survival. Sylvia Carter, who came off the Sibichis bench, the man from Mali in that game, is in from the start tonight in place of Hela Bojic. As the visitors come forward here, the other change, so he's a surprise return up front for Traore, who is not expected to feature again until the start of next season. It replaces Ben Sada, just behind the main striker, Mulanguli, the man who got both the goals in that victory over Lorient. There is Moulin Gullik right on cue. This is Deakiti. They work it well. Traore has some space here and he had time to luck up and pick his spot in the opposing penalty area. Having that in mind perhaps, well, the more might have been expected from the cross. Hard, eh? This is Bissabek back in the starting lineup today. Time to advance. Danic returns it into the middle. Treat up there for the strike from Sanchez, but he never really caught hold of that. Carlos Alberto Sanchez, the Colombian, certainly had a sight of goal here. to see that again. Du <laughs> Courtier wearing the captain's armband for Valencian tonight. With the regular club skipper, Rudy Marta, only amongst the Subajits, as he has tended to be in recent matches. Marta, the only one of the current squad in the running. For the uh, red and white Ungesha Award. One of the greatest player to have graced this stadium in this its final game. A true stalwart having joined in 2002, he was born in this city. Sterling service over so many years, but only as I say, amongst the Subajits tonight. It's an emotional occasion for so many reasons. Imaginatively titled Stan in question two will be hosting football next season. The question is which league will Valencian be in when they take their place in their new home? <laughs> Neither of these two teams have been in the relegation zone at any stage this season and yet there is a real danger that one of them could be that's danger zone, and it really matters most. That's what they're so desperate to avoid today as Mulanguli goes down here. Philippe Montagnier and Eric Roy, the two coaches with immense pressure on their shoulders this evening. Free kick here to the visitors, launched forward by Degard. Middlesbrough man in the heart of their midfield. This is patient and probing. Now 
can they find the delivery into the middle? Wasn't particularly convincingly dealt with by Mabiala, who's got himself into some trouble here. Referee Herb Pekirilio is unmoved by the protests. A little tangle of legs. It was Puyol who went down in the penalty area. there Dan it's making the run halted rather unceremoniously in his tracks and he has it back here once again his touch was poor Traore back defending really is something of a surprise see Traore in the starting lineup and initially just a few days ago been ruled out of the game we were led to understand that he wouldn't be returning until next season Caught it back here because of an earlier challenge. But let it go and play advantage. This was right. Challenge on Mulungui. That was the incident in the danger area just moments ago as Puyol went down and Mabiala was almost punished. Some hesitancy in defending the danger. keep you up to date with the goals from the other games that matter in this relegation equation I can tell you that Khan already have the lead against Marseille team who have to settle for second Olympic Marseille at the top of the table Khan with an early advantage at home there that would take them as it stands above both of these teams see and Monaco behind them as well you'll see at home to already relegated lawns that is still goalless as is Monaco's game changes of course you will hear about them here but it's what happens in this match that matters for these two if they win it then results elsewhere become irrelevant only for the loser will they be casting nervous glances across the country staying tuned to radios relying on whispers maybe from elsewhere they need to block that out certainly at this early stage when their fate is in their own hands Point will do for Nice. It's Valencian with the home advantage. Just a point between them, remember, going into this game. And there's not been too much between them so far in the opening stages here. Sable, the captain, spreading it wide. And the whistle had gone. Far from convinced. Well, this is in Mounier there on that far side. Flag was up against him. Anthony Mounier, the man from Tunisia. Okay, so the officials got that spot on. to give chase that's well defended he's been the key man for Nice for much of this season seven goal striker from Gabon including both against Lorient last weekend such an important victory most of the teams 
down at the bottom of the table did get positive results last weekend it's the fact so many remain in trouble on the final day Kulabali gets it back Sable forward Penato will deal with that fairly comfortably in goal for Valencian. Neat footwork, but to no real avail so far. It's maybe not the sort of occasion for those sort of skills, is it? It's more blood and thunder, heart and passion. There's top flight status at stake. Your last relegated from the top flight. In controversial circumstances back in 1993. They were caught up in the Marseille bribery scandal, you might remember. Really dangerous ball in by Danic. Comes to nothing in the end. That is not to detract from the quality of the delivery here. It's just nobody in red to attack it. As Gael Danic played that in across. Still, the danger is not yet completely dispersed. Sanchez battling for it. The whistle is gone here for a free kick to Nice. Chance to clear their lines. It is Sanchez who is penalised. As I was saying, they lost to Marseille on the final day of the 1993 season. One of the players admitted to taking a bribe to take it easy. Players left the club, they finished last in League Dirt the following season and eventually ended up at an amateur side in the fourth tier filing for bankruptcy before being renamed in 1996 and beginning the climb back. The promotion to League Dirt in 2005 went straight up to Liga and they've been there ever since. Tenth last year just survived in 17th place in 2007 it's their fifth successive season at this level as for Nice a club of such proud history and tradition of course four times winners of Liga though all of those in the 1950s The original members of the French First Division in its very first season in 1932. Only Marseille, Montpellier, Rouen, and Sochaux played then and now in the top flight alongside the team from Nice. Last relegated in 1997, days after winning the French Cup, in fact. They spent five years in the second tier, returned in 2002. Well, to meet initially financial requirements and were relegated two divisions but appealed and were reinstated and they have been in the top flight for a decade now real danger that one of these teams could see those proud records broken today that's David Ospina the goalkeeper from Colombia has been first choice for Nice this season, keeping Lionel Letizzi, by the way, on the Subacic bench. Letizzi now 38 years of age, he turned 38 yesterday, and this will be his last game as a professional footballer. He retires at the end of the season. His farewell to a former French international goalkeeper, whatever the outcome today. He's amongst the Nice substitutes. And circumstances been different. Maybe we would have seen him in the starting lineup today. run by Gomi and he's managed to get the ball into the middle still danger here Bong with the ball in well there were plenty back there to try and clear that away for Nice and they were rather hesitant in doing so back in by Bong
Danic. Get the throw as opposed to the corner. Bong to take this throw, the man from Cameroon. Here's Danic, whistle's gone. So tense, so tight. It stands that goal for Kant has taken them up to 11th. Still at Monaco, who would go down as things stand, but an awful long way to go on this final day. Monaco at home to Olympic Lyonnais. Leo, remember, crowned champions last weekend. Just done the double. Here's Mounier. Dispossessed there. No uncertain terms. Courtillo. They have time to try and build from the back here. Valencia certainly not lacking support, as you would expect this evening. of just short of 16 and a half thousand inside this arena. New ground will hold 25,000. Courtier trying to make ground from full back there. It's just asking a little too much of the skipper. This coach watches on. Montagnier. Boulogne into promotion to Liga. Joining Valencia in uh, 2009, to 10th last year, in his first full season in charge. He replaced Antoine Comborier, who got the promotion in 06. Eric Roy in the opposing dugout. Director of Sport at Nice last season that took over as caretaker initially. March of 2010, after the sacking of Didier or Nicole, he's kept the job ever since. There's Bissebeck. with goals at the moment, so shall one that in front at already relegated Arles, the bottom club from Avignon. Bordeaux lead Montpellier by a goal to nil as Rossillon come forward here to lose one nil up at Stade Brestois. They're still very much in the relegation equation as well, that's a good ball in. In towards Sanchez, it didn't quite reach him. They go to Angua, the centre back on the halfway line, and they'll try and build again. Here's Bong. Can't still one up against Marseille. Made the big movers down at the bottom so far. Nervous first 20 minutes, as you might expect, perhaps. Just too strong for Danic there. Pointing where he wanted it, where it arrived was somewhere rather different. Very nervous faces on show at the moment.
Important intervention from Pejanovic. Just managed to get his foot in there. Serbian defender. But it's the hosts looking the more dangerous of the two at the moment. Of that there is little doubt as we approach the midway point of this first half. Daigo trying to go forward. Haven't offered too much as an attacking threat as yet, Nice. Certainly content to allow their host possession in these sort of areas, though. It becomes rather more frenetic. And frantic when they get further forward. Final third. Good turn by Kadir. Nigerian couldn't quite get the cross in. He does have the pace to pose a few problems down that right-hand side. Courtier to take the throw. That's a decent ball in. Goalkeeper came and collided with his own man, really. Or spinner. There's no whistle for the foul against him. It's perhaps a little fortunate here. Eyes on the ball, but he... Because of that, didn't see his own defender, Mabiala. Was it good ball in by Du Courtier? It did perhaps highlight some frailties in the visiting defence. by Mabiala, this time it's Bisevac, both teams with the Serbians at the heart of their defences tonight. Kohade there, trying to influence things from the middle of the park. This is Sanchez. Good skills, he's created a bit of space for himself. It's going to be ambitious to have a go from there. The deflection almost worked in his side's favour. Oh, the whistle rather belatedly did go. Quickly closed down. And the challenge by Puyol. He was penalised there. He's got an arm across the shoulder on Petanovic. Which he used to really generate some leverage. I can put the other end. It's every bit as tight and tense as you would have expected with so much at stake. Lorient understand have uh, taken the lead against Ozer by a goal to nil. So uh, started the season, of course, in the Champions League are not completely out of danger themselves yet. Started the evening in 12th. Not yet safe, that tells you everything about how tight this division has become in the bottom half of it. The Portier gets the ball in. He was quoted as saying that the championship is contested over 38 matches. We will have only what we deserve. We have the chance to play to save the club. I do not see why it goes wrong. So David de Courtier a couple of days ago in the build-up to this match in their own hands for both these teams. So it makes it so intriguing. Certainly Valenciennes, who have started the stronger. Bisevac whistles one wide. It's quite well wide in the end, but again, the goalkeeper coming for the cross and not really getting near it. Present for Valencia on this season. He has featured in every single league game 
Juventus has played in every minute of their campaign. Desperately trying to keep that in, tight to the touchline. Just unsuccessful in doing so, De Coutinho with a throw. Oh. He has looked a real live wire in the early stages. Possibly the closest that he's come, though. Finishing not quite as impressive as his approach play. What must they be thinking at this stage? So much pressure on one fixture. Maybe, of course, that whatever happens here, both these sides will be safe, but they cannot take that chance. The only fixture on the final day where both the teams involved going head to head, both involved in this relegation battle. Which is still to be decided for the European qualifying places at the other end of the table as well, of course. There's the fight for survival we are concentrating on here. Valencia's problem has been drawing games, a lack of a cutting edge perhaps to finish teams off, 18 draws this season, it's one short of the division's highest, they've drawn their last three in fact, including at Marseille last week, so despite being unbeaten in their last four games, they have won just one of those, it's only one defeat in ten away at Paris Saint-Germain, but only two wins in that period, here in 10 league games. You've guessed that six of those were drawn. Six of the last seven, in fact. They've been able to turn those one points into three. Just a couple of the games, then they would already be safe. As I mentioned, neither of these two teams has ever been in the bottom three at any stage all season. Marta, the club captain for Valencia, saying, oh yeah, we were not in the relegation zone, it would be an injustice for they to end up there. So, so some of his teammates, though, have pointed out that it's not what happens today, it's what happens in the 38 games. You finish where you deserve to finish. Half an hour in, still nothing between them. It's safe regardless of results elsewhere. If it stays like this, results elsewhere stay like this, then both will be safe. But plenty of time for plenty more twists and turns now at the bottom of the table. Monaco at home to Olympic Lyonnais really have to win tonight. That is still goalless. Zerev have equalised at Lorient, that's 1-1. One, one. On a club, Al Avignon have equalised against Sochi, that's one apiece as well. Still Bordeaux, one nil up on Montpellier, to lose one nil up at Stade Brestois. Khan leading Olympic de Marseille by a goal to nil, that's an important scoreline. Stade Rene have now gone in front at the Champions Leo by a goal to nil. More significance at the other end of the table, of course. The main factor that may count against Nice is the goal difference. Minus 14 coming into this. It's the worst of any of the teams around them. Koulibaly, it's a good ball. 
Michael delivers it in. It needed the intervention from Bisevac. Well positioned there, the centre back. There weren't too many visiting attackers to aim for for Didier Diga. Barley wins the throw and will take it himself here. Get it back once again. They'll work it well in a tight situation there. It's not a bad ball in either. Sabla who rose highest there. Got a contact on it. Couldn't really divert that goal to the captain. Couldn't too far away. Support from his skipper. The courtier couldn't quite take that one with him. Do get the corner though, which is worked short and quickly. Whistle goes this time. Referee was right on the spot. Decided there was an infringement. Bisevac. Just can't keep it in, it's not quite going for them at the moment. A little bit scrappy. A little bit touchy. Wholly understandable. <laughs> Last ten minutes of this first half, the deadlock remains. Too many clear-cut chances for either side so far. Sabla, who's had a decent effort, glanced just wide. Or knees on the ball here. It's a good turn. Just outnumbered in the end, though, Mulanguli. Outnumbered in the end, Milaguli. Striker from Gabon. Puyol there is the main attacking threat for Valencia. 15 goals so far this season, just short of an average of one every other game.
has gone Valencian way here. This well works. But it's space for Kadir. Not a bad cross by Kadir either, and the goalkeeper gets down smartly. Or Spina to make the save on his near post. Puyol was threatening. That perhaps the closest that the hosts have come here. Instinctive little flick towards goal, perhaps no more than that. There was a deflection on the cross initially as well. Smart save for Quiet. A flag up. First real opportunity that the top scorer. Gregory Puyol has got the 31-year-old Frenchman. I think that was just about squeezing in, but for the flying save from the Colombian keeper. Too far. battling for it both playing the final touch came off the other there up and there is space for the cross it's a spectacular attempt to connect with it as well and lofted back in by Koulibaly Panato comes and gathers that would have been quite some goal wouldn't it and that contact paid off Fender was always likely to be in the way though Fractious first half. Free kick to Valencian. Down it's to take. It's a decent delivery. Whistle went very early there against Cadia. Just saw his route to goal blocked. The Algerian for his fifth goal of the season. Ward now 2-0 up on Montpellier elsewhere. Lille have equalised the champions against Stade Rene, that's one apiece. See leading Lawrence by a goal to nil. Now that has implications as well. That drags these two a place closer the relegation zone, the two teams behind them at the moment, Stade Prestois who are losing, home to Toulouse and Monaco, started the day in that 18th and final relegation place, and still nil-nil at home to Olympique Lyonnais, and if either 
those two teams, or in fact both those two teams were to get anything from those games. Still, of course, imminently possible. And Valencia would need a winner here. Here's De Courtier. Traore. Bit of space for Traore. Space soon disappeared though. But Valencian still without Stephen Lanky, the man on loan from Ozea, because of a knee injury. Raphael, the defender, has a back problem. He's too unavailable tonight. Final game of the season. Angel in particular has been a big miss of late. All his appearances though in his lone stint have been off the Subject bench. Just the one goal so far for the Frenchman. Didn't get the chance to add to that tally. Down it's battling for this has done well. Tackles are flying in, it's full blooded. Total commitment from both teams. Really, you expect nothing less. It's Bisaba. Starting perhaps needs just to sit a little deeper as this half goes on. Well works to the path here. Well, Bong to pull back. Just about run out of pitch though in his attempts to do so. It's a hard day's ball. Kept it in. But put it straight at the goalkeeper as a result. There was little else really. Pull that could do in that sort of situation. Gaetan Pong from Cameroon. Here he is again. Danic. Harder in there, comes back to Pong. This is Sanchez. Had a spell of possession this by Valencia. Still, it comes to nothing though, although the clearance is. Well, they're aimless to say the least from the visitors. Penetro back in possession. Such an emotional occasion for those Athenians. Spent 40 years in Liga. Not consecutively, but it's still a decent period of their history. Which they will want to continue next year. Last minute of the first half. Had the greatest share of possession, haven't created too much, but here they come with Danic. Injecting a bit of pace to the attack. Just one short of double figures in terms of goals from midfield. Gael Danic this season. What an occasion this would be to make it to 10 in total in the Liga campaign. Time to do so as well. It's a stoppage time we go at the end of this first half. Vibrant atmosphere has been maintained throughout the first half. Fans certainly, even if the players aren't, will be aware of what is going on elsewhere. They are currently a point inside of the relegation zone. With a better goal difference than Monaco as well. Who would really need to win their game. Here's the Courtier. Searching ball in. Goalkeeper again misjudged it, not for the first time. And again, he's got away with it. There's Ospina, who has been far from convincing on crosses. That perhaps is something that Valencian will look to exploit in the second half. They failed to do so just 
before the break. The half-time whistle has gone here. Anxious moments right at the end of the half for the visitors. They know a point will be enough, but it's a dangerous game to try and preserve what they have in the second half here. Valencian, who need the win, really. They're there to be sure, without needing favours from elsewhere, have had the better chances. But it's so tense out there, so nervous, and nobody yet has been able to step up and make themselves a hero. Half time at the Stade oui, Gunnissa, it remains. Avec Renault, Renault, uh, Valencian, nil. Nice, une uh, première nice, mi-temps plutôt bien maîtrisée de votre part. Oui, mais ça suffit pas. Il va falloir trouver la faille face à cette équipe de Nice qui est, qui est bien en bloc derrière et ils sont bien resserrés. Et c'est difficile de se procurer des occasions malgré tout. Oui, c'est vrai qu'on a la maîtrise du ballon. Maintenant, il va falloir avoir le geste juste pour concrétiser. La conséquence, c'est que vous restez sur la cour de raid. Pardon La conséquence directe, le fait que vous n'ayez pas marqué, c'est que vous restez sur la cour de raid. Oui, effectivement, nous, on a à cœur de l'emporter pour ce dernier match. On sait qu'en l'emportant, on est, on est sauvé, donc on va tout faire pour. Merci beaucoup. Thank 
pour vous donner un bon anniversaire du partenaire du DAIC. Et avant que vous accueillir au stade Rochester, on vous souhaite une agréable mi-temps. Le club prévoit une spécialité dans l'assurance des personnes et le partenaire du DAIC. N'oubliez pas, le prêt du bain santé, c'est la complémentaire santé qui vous ressemble. Toutes les clés du groupe prévoir vous attendent sur l'agence de Valenciennes ou sur www.prévoir.com. Et si vous êtes président de club sportif ou d'association et que vous cherchez des sponsors, n'hésitez pas à contacter Karim ou de l'agence prévoir de Valenciennes. Et si le tunnel de Suez Environnement et tous ses collaborateurs de notre atelier sont fiers d'apporter leur enthousiasme et leur couleur au club du BNC, SIFA vous souhaite une bonne soirée. Le BNC et le Crédit Agricole vous propose la carte bancaire Mastercard BNC avec des avantages exclusifs et un geste de solidarité. Au final de 8% de remise à la boutique officielle du BNC. Cette carte bancaire est disponible uniquement dans votre agence du Crédit Agricole dans le France. Avec votre carte de l'année ou votre billet d'entrée de match, vous bénéficiez d'un burger offert pour l'achat d'un demi dans vos restaurants, McDonald's.